Hi guys, this is Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins, and today I thought I'd do a video on how to tune your violin. Now, this video could be fairly complex and long, but I'm just going to do a short video, or as short as I can, on the three primary ways in which you can tune your violin, and then if you guys want me to focus on one specific way in which to tune your violin, then maybe I'll just do a separate video at some point on how to do that. So, there's three kinds of ways to tune your violin, generally speaking. One is the most common way in which violins are tuned by professionals or just very experienced violinists, and that is, is that some device will, or instrument will emit an A, right? That's one of your strings, right? You have four strings, G, D, A, E. And so some, something will emit that A pitch, and then you will match all of your other strings to that A. So your strings will be tuned in relation to that A. Now your violin is tuned in fifths, meaning the, the strings are all five notes apart from each other. So for example, the A is five notes apart from the E, A, B, C, D, E, right? And so is the, G, the D to the A and the G to the D. They're five notes apart. So basically when, when you get that A emitted by something, you, you tune your A to that pitch, and then you tune the other strings in relation to that, that A, and it, this is the most uh, accurate, quickest, easiest way to tune your violin, and it's the, also the most common, but it does require the most ability and practice. And that's why you generally only see more experienced violinists do that. But that's why when you go to a, uh, an orchestra concert or something, you see the oboist play an A and then everybody starts tuning, or you see the concert master, you know, get up and play an A on their violin and everybody else tunes, that's why. So that's the, the first method. The second method, which is easier, and it's uh, more common for, um, people with less experience with the violin, would be to have a device of some sort emit, emit every pitch on the violin. So you'll have something, I'll, I'll go over them a little bit, but you'll have something like, let's say, a uh, pitch pipe or a piano or whatever, and it'll emit the separate pitches, the G, the D, the A, and the E, and you'll, string, you'll tune each string to that pitch using your ear, and then you're probably going to be pretty darn close as far as having the violin in tune. The other way that is probably the most common way for um, beginner violinists is to use an electronic device that actually will receive the pitch and then tell you if it's in tune or not. So you don't have to necessarily know with your ear. You can literally look at the device and it'll tell you, are you in tune or not? And you just, you just adjust your violin until that, tune, that tuner tells you, yeah, it's in tune. Now, I don't know that this is extremely accurate. It depends on the device that you're using and a lot of other factors, but generally speaking, if you have a decent tuner, you can get your violin pretty close, maybe 97, 98% close. Um, now, I've got a little tuner here that uh, I'll be demonstrating with today. This is, a, if you buy a Kennedy Violins, um, violin or instrument from us, a lot of our instruments come with these tuners. They just, they just come with the outfit. So I'm just gonna kind of briefly show this one. Um, but I'm not going to go into great detail. I'll do that in some other video where I do a video specifically on this tuner. So if you've got one of our tuners, you'll know exactly how to use it. They're very easy, though. Okay, so for the first method, I will um, demonstrate that one first, okay? So generally, you'll get an A emitted by something. So I've, I've got a, a variety of objects here that will emit an A. Now this is a tuning fork, right? These are very inexpensive. You can get them for a few bucks on Amazon or something like that. And so you just hit the tuning fork on something. Could be your knee, could be an object. Don't, not your violin, hopefully. And then it emits that A. Now I'll put this next to the camera and we'll see if the camera picks it up. Okay, and you can also, this is kind of a neat trick, you can put that A on the, the, the tuning, the pitch fork, on uh, another object. Pretty cool. Okay, so anyways, that's how you do that. So, or you can use a, um, a pitch pipe. Again, you can get these on like Amazon or something for, you know, a few bucks. Right? Or, you can use like an electronic tuner like this, this is a giant thing, uh, and it'll emit any pitch that you want. So, 
show that really quick. So, we already have the A. A. I'm a great singer, right? Okay, so the A on the violin was a little bit flat, meaning it was too low. So I turned my fine tuner clockwise to tighten the string. And so when you tighten the string, that makes the pitch go up. So the more that I turn it clockwise, the higher the pitch. The more that I turn that tuner counterclockwise, you know, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, that thing, uh, the more you turn it counterclockwise, and the lower your pitch goes. So, okay, so now that I got my A pretty in tune, now I'll tune my other strings to that A. Now I made this violin in tune out of tune before the video so I could show you guys. Now all of these strings are flat, they're too low. So I'm going to turn these fine tuners clockwise until the fifth is nice and tight, so it's really in tune. Notice how it sounds really sour? Now I'm going to turn my E, because my A's in tune, remember, so my other strings are going to be tuned to that A. So now I'm going to turn this E clockwise until that sourness goes away and that fifth is nice and in tune. you can tell if the, if the fifth is um, in tune or not. As a general rule, you want that fifth to be as close as you can before it's too sharp. So you, you, you want that fifth, because the fifth can be in tune, but generally speaking, especially with a violin, you want that fifth as, you know, when you're tuning a string, let's say the E to the A, you want that E to be as sharp as you can get it without being too sharp. So you want to get it as high as you can while still having that fifth be in tune. As soon as it goes sharp, then you back away from that. Now I'm going to tune the D. Now write that D is a little bit sharp, so now I'm going to back away and I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. Okay, so now the G, it's really flat. So now I'm going to turn this fine tuner clockwise to tighten the string so I can get my pitch to go up. Okay, good. Now that I've got them pretty in tune, now I'm just going to go over them really quick to do a final tuning because sometimes if your strings are way off, by the time you get to the bottom string, when you go back up, then the strings at the top are out of tune. So I'm going to make sure it's really good. Okay, good. So that's how um, most uh, experienced violinists um, tune their violin. That's method number one. Okay, so method number two. Now, again, I'm going to knock this out of tune. I'm going to make these strings flat so I can show you... Um, how I would get it into. Okay, so here's a pitch pipe, right? So first I'm gonna tune my A. It's actually not bad, I'll make it worse. There we go, now it's bad. Okay, so here's my A again. Okay, get that A. So I've turned it clockwise to get it to match. Good. Now I'm going to do my E. That's my E. Sounds a little flat actually. Not a high quality pitch pipe, what can I say? Okay, now I'm going to 
turn it too far so you can hear it too sharp. Now it's sharp. <laughs> So now I'm going to go down counterclockwise. Now my G. Now I'm going to tune my G, my lowest one. G. Okay, and that's that. So. In a real world situation, I would go back again and double check all my strings and get them as close as I could to the, um, the pitch on the pitch pipe. And then my violin would be pretty close. But right now I can tell that it's, the fifths are a tiny bit off um, because I didn't tune it with the fifth method, but it's pretty close. Okay, that's the second method. Now, method. now third method. Now, I can only show you so much I'll do some close-up shots so you guys can see. But now this tuner is very simple. Uh, you press and hold the power button to turn it on. Okay, so it's got a little display here and when I play a pitch on the violin, it's going to display uh, whether it's in tune or not. And then when it's in tune, it's, so it's gonna display which um, string that I'm playing. So if I'm playing the A, it'll show an A on the screen. And this got a little needle that goes back and forth that tells me if it's sharp or it's flat, sharp or it's flat. And then when it's perfectly in tune, the screen will turn green. So basically, I'm just going to adjust these fine tuners until the screen turns green for all the strings. Okay, so you can just stick it on your peg. It actually will pick up the vibrations of the, the string. here, your violin is probably going to be 98% in tune. Yeah, if you're playing a bunch of stuff with um, uh, double stops, then not having perfectly in tune strings um, can make it more difficult. <laughs> or if you're playing a lot of stuff, let's say with open strings. It can make uh, more of a difference if your strings are out of tune, but otherwise, if you're just playing single string stuff, um, you know, if you got a violin that's 98% in tune, you're not going to notice. Nobody else is going to notice. It doesn't really make that much difference. So, anyways, guys, I hope that this video was of help today. I hope I answered a few questions, maybe cleared the mud a little bit. Um, and if you want me to make a video that's maybe more in depth on some of the methods that I talked about, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll do a more in-depth uh, video on some of the other methods of tuning the violin. And don't forget to subscribe, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos and uh, I love to do videos um, that you guys request. In fact, this video was requested by a subscriber not too long ago, so I thought, hey, I'll just move this video up in a queue and, and uh, maybe some other people would like to see it. And of course, always feel free to uh, contact us here at Kennedy Violins. You know, we're always we're all players and teachers. We're happy to answer any kind of questions that you got. And uh, don't forget to have an awesome day. Thanks.